how can we have that? There you go. Okay, we'll be entering Northern Kentucky History Hour in about two minutes. Now, we, all I do is hit share screen and then I should be able to find my file. Yes, sir. That's right. <laughs> okay, good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and record if you're ready for me to do that. We're good. We're good. All right, we're recording. All right. We have a lot of new registrants tonight. <laughs> and can we match? Yes, we do. We planned that, didn't we? Yes. All right, we're gonna start. Good evening and welcome to the Northern Kentucky History Hour. I'm gonna spend just the next two minutes letting everyone in. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We look forward to a great presentation. It'll be just a couple minutes while we let everyone in. Good evening and welcome to the Northern Kentucky History Hour. If you're just now joining us, we're gonna spend the next couple minutes letting everyone in and then we will get started. Thank you so much for joining us. While you're waiting, you will note that our um, microphones are muted, but if you have any questions, please add those in the chat bar. Okay. Oops. All right, let's see here. Okay, hi, good evening, welcome. My name is Tara Johnson Nome, and I am one of the members of the Board of Trustees for the Barringer Crawford Museum. I am so happy to see all of you here this evening. We are glad to have you for this uh, seventh episode, I believe, of the Northern Kentucky History Hour. Um, it's been great so far to learn about um, some of the very rich history that we have in our region. If you would like to see any of the past episodes, they have been streamed to our Behringer Crawford Museum Facebook page. So you can go to the Facebook page, click on events, I'm sorry, actually click on videos, and you can scroll down and actually see all of the rich content that Behringer Crawford Museum offers. In addition to our history hours, we have much shorter snippets called curators chats, where our collection curator, Jason French, features some of the very interesting artifacts uh, of our collection and also goes around the region highlighting some of Northern Kentucky's history. They average about five minutes and can be just a highlight, something interesting to see during your day. So we really encourage you to go to the Facebook page and to our website. Right now on our website, you can find links to tomorrow night's um, free concert. Um, that we're offering. We normally have those in person at the museum, but due to uh, COVID-19, we're going virtual with our concerts as well. And we also have something very interesting coming up that we're a part of in conjunction with ArtsWave, the regional arts organization, where we will be participating in the Everything But the House, or EBTH, Arts Relief Auction. And very exciting, um, the museum is offering an archeological dig and a behind the scenes tour of the museum as our two uh, auction items. So you might wanna check that out personally. Um, I'm thinking of bidding myself on the arche archeological dig. It sounds really interesting. So I um, wanna say again, we finally, I think have about everyone in the room here. So my, uh, my delay tactics paid off. Welcome again to Northern Kentucky History Hour. 
We uh, are supported and a part of Beringer Crawford Museum, Northern Kentucky's History Museum. Uh, we are supported as a museum by the City of Covington, the Kenton County Fiscal Court, Artswave, the Kentucky Arts Council, the Northern Kentucky Sports Hall of Fame, and the Carol Ann and Ralph V. Hale Jr. U.S. Bank Foundation. We are also supported by our members. So if you're not a member yet, please consider joining. And we um, have a great program for you tonight. We have Pam Markham, one of my fellow board trustees and former history teacher. She is very involved in the um, Daughters of the American Revolution. And she has two patriots that she is going to be sharing tonight. Before Pam and Kent Markham, her wonderful husband gets started in the presentation, I just wanna remind you that your microphone is muted, but if you have a question, please add your question in the chat box and then I will be monitoring that and make sure that we get to all the questions that we possibly can at the end. So Pam and Kent, welcome. And uh, thanks for, for joining us. Thanks for asking us. We're excited about it. Do I do anything to? No. Okay. Hey, first of all, I want to correct something you said or oh, someone no. that I was an expert. <laughs> I'm not an expert. I'm just someone who loves to tell my stories. And I hope that I can encourage other people to tell their stories about their family. I think it's one of the most important things we do is to keep a record for the future generations of our families, especially if we have a Revolutionary War Patriot. So I wanna give you some information about first, we'll start with the Sons of the American Revolution. They were founded first in 1889 and they have over 35,000 members. Kentucky has 18 chapters. Uh, the home of the uh, Sons of the American Revolution is in Louisville, Kentucky. They're on the main street. Here's their building. They're right across from the, a bat, the bat factory where they make Louisville Slugger. Okay, so anyway, um, the biggest thing they do, they're, uh, re, they're refurbishing this warehouse and it will be, be um, especially for the genealogy research. Okay, so anyway, it's on the main street in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay, the next thing, let's talk about the Daughters of the American Revolution. They have a beautiful headquarters a couple blocks from the White House. And my husband every year would go on a conference in Washington, D.C., and I could walk four blocks to the DAR headquarters from my hotel. And I would love to go in the library yeah, the, when the library picture he's going to add later. Yeah. There it is. Look at this beautiful library, and it goes by states. So if you want to look, uh, Kentucky, there's a whole section on Kentucky. Isn't it beautiful? Uh, they've redone the lighting at the top. They're redoing all kinds of things. This is supported by all the chapters of the DAR. Again, it's on 1776. D Northwest Street. I think that's an appropriate address. Again, it's education, history, and patriotism. And the DAR was founded a year later in 1890 in Washington. And an interesting fact, um, Mary Deshay, one of the four founders is from, was from Lexington, Kentucky, and she's buried in the Lexington Cemetery. She died in 1911. Anyway, one of the four founders uh, from Lexington. Okay, the next important building in our history is Duncan Tavern. Okay, here's Dun Duncan Tavern in Paris, Kentucky. It's the home of the Kentucky DAR. Okay, and they have a library there, John Fox Genealogy Library. He was a famous Kentucky author. Um, we've had lunch there. They have festivals. Um, he was a Revolutionary War officer, Joseph Duncan. And the Kentucky DAR pays for this building. It's beautiful. 
Okay. Um, this, uh, before we get to this slide, I want to talk about um, local chapters. And I want to give a shout out to my Rebecca Brian Boone, DAR ladies. There are a lot of them are watching tonight. Janet Kenny is our wonderful president, and we meet at the Kenton County Library. There are three, 84 chapters in all in Kentucky, and we have Kenton, Rebecca Brian Boone meets in the Kenton County Library, Boone meets in the Boone County Library, and Fort Thomas, Mary Ingalls meets in the Country Club in Fort Thomas. Okay, how to join? Um, you have to be 18 years of age, each chapter has a registrar, and the registrar's job is to help you with your paperwork. So you have to go back from you to your Revolutionary War person. You have to have birth certificates, death certificates, um, all kinds of anything that would document your connection. It's not as hard as you would think since Ancestry has taken over. A lot of people are on Ancestry with their Revolutionary War person. And so it's pretty easy. Okay, and I have to tell you why we're talking about this. This is my hobby. I like to do this for friends. I've done this for a lot of people. I like to give them their Revolutionary War person as a gift. Now, some people bake cakes, some people make quilts. I like to give Revolutionary War, uh, Revolutionary War people documents to my friends. And I'll tell you my most famous document uh, is the state treasurer, um, Allison Ball. She came to speak to the Republican women. And my other friend, is her grandmother's a Ball. So anyway, I documented that they were distant cousins. And I documented Allison's uh, Revolutionary War person. So when I ran into it, uh, her at another event, she goes, oh, there's my genealogist. I was really excited that she remembered and her husband said he'd seen the papers. It was quite exciting. Another friend of mine who died, I ran into his wife who I'd never met. And she said, I saw your paperwork. You don't know how much that meant to him. So uh, I have documented a lot of people out in the independence area and I give it to people that are related to them. And it really is something that really they love. So it's something I can do when I don't have the other hobbies that other people have. Okay, so anyway, my great aunt Helen Medcalf loved to write about the people of rural Kenton County. And she was in the DAR. And when I was growing up, I thought she was crazy. And I thought, oh, why would someone do that? Well, she would be so proud of me that I've become so obsessed with it. Okay, anyway, she joined the DAR in 1924 on the Metcalf line. I joined in 2013 on the Metcalf line. So anyway, I keep thinking of her and what she would think how I've gotten into this in such a deep way. So anyway, each chapter has a registrar. And if you have trouble, which a lot of people do, working on their Revolutionary War person, they will help you. Or I get calls all the time. I got a call last week from a gentleman that's on the Edgewood City Council. He and his sister want me to help them join the DAR and the SAR. And I'm very excited about it. I think it's wonderful that um, people think enough of you to call you. Then I have to tell you this bad side of it when I was in the DAR headquarters, now that they've gotten better with their paperwork, uh, they have red lines in some of the uh, D uh, SAR and DAR people. And that means your line doesn't add up. So luckily mine did add up. And so anyway, um, there's so many people like William Stevens, maybe there are two or three people with the same name. So this can make your, it could tell you on the red line, it would tell you why yours does not add up. This line is no longer good. This line just needs some work, all kinds of interesting things. So I was thrilled that my line did add up. Okay, and Ruth Korsenborn, if you wanna talk about someone who's 
an expert. Ruth Korsenborn is the expert and she did mine and she's done a lot of people's and she spent her whole lifetime working with a DAR. She's wonderful. Okay, so anyway, there's two ways these patriots add up. One of them is military service, of course, and the other is patriotic service. That means uh, they signed a thing saying they would support the revolution or they gave uh, maybe supplies. And I wanna read this to you, the oath of fidelity. In Maryland in 1777, every free male 18 years and older had to sign where he renounced king, his king and pledged allegiance to the revolution. Okay, then this man named G.M. Brunsvall published in 1915, the names of the 9,000 men who signed the oath. So this is what you would have to go to if you were doing uh, a patriotic service person. And if you, if you signed this oath, you didn't have to pay triple tax. You could hold certain jobs. Anyway, so anyway, there were punishment if you didn't sign it. So anyway, I think that's pretty interesting. My guy supposedly is patriotic service. Now, look at the picture, the real daughters. Ruth Korsenborn had this big event at the Independent Cemetery. The DAR thinks that there might have been about 500 real daughters. That means their father was actually in the revolution. Can you believe that? And can you believe that this lady is buried in the Independence Cemetery of all places? Okay, her name is, um, wait, I've lost it. Okay, so anyway, okay, Mary, no, Lucinda Ellis, this is her over here. She died at the age of 98 at her daughter's house in Covington, Kentucky. And she's buried at the Independence Cemetery. And we had this big ceremony, April 14th, 2012, where we marked her grave with a DAR um, emblem. And we had all kinds of people coming to this big event. So anyway, a, a real daughter buried in the Independence Cemetery. That is very exciting. So anyway, Ruth at the time was the state registrar. That means she was in charge of checking all the paperwork for all the people in the state that applied for the DA office. She is awesome. She knows her DAR. Okay, now you wanna go and Okay, here's Lucinda's grave. This is the is under a tree in the Independent Cemetery, and you can see um, the DAR emblem was placed on her grave. We had newspaper people there, and here's the odd thing: she is the only person buried there. There's no other family members, uh, so I don't know how she happened to get, get out there, and nobody else from her family. She was from Orange County, Virginia and she died in Covington at the age of 98 at her daughter's house. Okay, so now let's get into my... people. Okay, William Stevens. You ready to go? <clears throat> okay, first let's talk about how they got land. You got land according to your rank from major general down to like a private, a hundred acres, a sailor, a soldier, three. This is how they got people to enlist and serve. So here's another thing. Um, when we are working on a book of all these people that's settled in Kenton and Campbell County. And we'll see if we have anybody that has a large, like since uh, there are generals, we'll get, it'll be a wonderful thing when we get it finished. But most of them were privates and they got a hundred acres. How they came here, remember Kenton, this area, Kenton Campbell was the wild west. That's hard for people to understand. And we have found over 60 
Revolutionary War people that settled in this area. And remember, Ken was part of Campbell until 1840. So we're not separating them because it would be, we'd have to know where their farm was and it would take forever to figure all this out. So anyway, I'm gonna tell you about William Stevens. First of all, the big thing is grave markers. That's what the SAR and the DAR as a big thing. Very few of the people that we've come across in Ken County can we find their grave. Okay, William Stevens was buried on his farm on Stevens Road. And Stevens Road is right off of uh, Taylor Mill. He came from Virginia and he had nine children and he went to um, down in Kentucky before he came here because I found the marriage certificate of his daughter um, in Bourbon County. So anyway, his uncle Darnell came in with Daniel Boone's. So this is another thing I wanna do. I wanna find out, did he come with him? Did he come with other relatives? What all did he do? So anyway, we have to tell you about his farm on Stevens Road. Um, we didn't, this is in the front row of Independence Cemetery and it's a memorial and not a grave marking. And what happened, we went on the farm, the farm was for sale. All of the graves have been disturbed. The stones are all gone except one of his sons. And there was an article in the Kent County Historical Society talking about Stevens, the cemetery, and how all the stones were taken. Today, this would be against the law. And this is a sad thing. So the DAR had marked his, had seen his grave in the 1960s. The SAR had seen his grave and this man that documented his grave said the stones were all thrown up against the barn. So evidently at one time they saw his grave. So anyway, this is the DAR marker. And this is on the front row of the Independence Cemetery. This is my family's um, property. And Dr. Medcalf married a Stevens. So this is how I get these two Revolutionary War people. We went, I think we've been to maybe 20 grave markings throughout the state. So I saw this memorial to another um, patriot. And I kept telling Ken, I have to have it. I don't care how much it costs. I have to have it. So anyway, they made it for me at, uh, what's the name of the place, Ken? Lewin. Lewin. Okay. So anyway, turn to the back side. Gotcha. This is the SAR marker in the ground in semen so that no one takes it. Okay. And this is what I love. This is the back side. American Revolution Patriots in loving memory of the brave men who fought for freedom and the families who followed them here, April, 2015. I, I just stood there and cried. Um, first of all, my aunt Helen never thought I would be into this stuff. She didn't, in fact, she gave all her writings about rural Kenton County to someone else. She didn't trust me. And her grave is right next to this. She would be, my family would be so proud of me from telling their story all the way back to this Revolutionary War gentleman. So anyway, I think of these families that came here and most, most of them died, they got illness, uh, how they made it, I don't know. But anyway, um, that's my favorite thing about doing this. Okay, so anyway, um, I found William Stevens' will in the courthouse, he had nine children and evidently they were all alive at the time that he died in 1819. Uh, okay, so anyway, um, I wanted to do this and I'll tell you the reason we didn't put it on the farm, there would be no way people could see it and it would be taken, I don't know. And the farm was up for sale. They don't want this stuff on their farms. 
So anyway, I thought every 4th of July, Independence has this big um, 4th of July parade. And Kent and I went out there and put the flags all around his grave, I mean, all around his memorial. So we, wanted, we want young people to stop, even older people, and see this and think about these wonderful people that settled rural Kenton County. So anyway, um, another thing I've done, every time I run across someone from an old family that lived out in rural Kenton County, I see if they're related to Stevens. And you can't imagine how many families are related to the Stevens family. Well, these nine children intermarried with all kinds of people. Anyway, the Stevens founded that Baptist church that's down on the bank lick. Um, they built these cabins and they settled all this street, this road, and now it's named Stevens. So anyway, um, it was not a grave marking, it was a memorial. <clears throat> so anyway, okay, here we are. We had it at the old, here I am. These are members of the SAR. We had about 30 men come here to this big event at the old courthouse. And that's the flag being presented to me. And the reason we had it at the old courthouse is because of bad weather. And that's Kent, there I am. It rained sideways that day and it would have been ruined if we would have been at this independent cemetery or the farm or someplace. And here's, here's our guys. They came from all over and see the gentleman in the brown this is a uh, Reverend, which is Forrest Ch Chilton. Okay, and he has since died. This man spent his life going around to grave markings. He, he was the one that did the ceremony for me at the courthouse. And this is Kent, and a lot of them are members of his chapter. Some of them are members of other chapters. And this is a big thing with the SAR as grave markings. They have a beautiful ceremony and I have it on film if anybody ever wants to see it. Um, some of them were from Louisville, all kinds of places. Anyway, Forrest Chilton, that was his life marking graves throughout the state. What a wonderful man. And after it was over with, we went out to lunch with him. I hate that he's gone. There's another gentleman, this guy has taken over. Oh, they can't see when I point. Anyway, there's another gentleman who's taken over the grave markings for the state. Okay, here's our question. Well, I hear you have a, a prize. What year did Kenton become a county? Who provided the land for the courthouse and in independence? You can think about that and we'll get back to it. Okay, my other... Revolutionary War person is John Metcalf. Okay, he was the father of Thomas Metcalf, the 10th governor of Kentucky. And that's the picture of him. This is in the on the top on the old governor's mansion in Frankfurt. We were down there for, a, I belong to the Heritage League. And we were down there for a dinner at the governor's mansion and a tour of the old governor's mansion. So when you're working on genealogy for your, let's say for uh, this Metcalf guy, there was a lot of information about him being the governor's, his father, the 10th governor. Okay, so anyway, um, John Metcalf came in on a flatboat and it said it was the, one of the largest flatboats led by Simon Kenton, 1783, that ever came down the river. And there was like 40 or 50 people on this flatboat, can you imagine? Okay, with animals, supplies. When you think of what these people did, it is amazing, amazing. So anyway, um, I was really excited to have my picture taken with the 10th governor. Okay, this is Stephen Collins. Okay, so when I'm there, he's a son of Martha Lane Collins. 
and he gives tours of the old governor's mansion and the new governor's mansion. And he is such an, he has so much knowledge of this, these places because he lived in the new governor's mansion. Okay, so anyway, I was telling him, I think I qualify for first families of Kentucky when he's doing the tour. And you have your, to be in Kentucky before statehood, 1792. You're a revolutionary person or your person. So anyway, he says, you must join. And you know how you say, okay, and you kind of like, I'd love to go for a year. And one day he called me, he said, Pam, when are we getting your paperwork? I want you to join this. So here I am being sworn in at Spindletop in Lexington by Stephen Collins, Martha Lane Collins' son. And I have to tell you, I have a booklet of all the people in the first families of Kentucky. And there are only three from Northern Kentucky. Uh, so anyway, that makes it even more exciting. So anyway, um, you have to trace your person back to John Metcalf, just like you do for the DAR and the SAR. So anyway, this is really, I think, a pretty big deal. Okay, so anyway, um, now I'm working on a book. I always have a problem. This is John Decker, and he's on a he's buried on a farm on the Pendleton, the Kenton Pendleton County line. And one night, Kent and I, <laughs> we had heard about that he was buried there. We we're driving around, and these guys are standing out by the road. And we asked them if they'd ever seen his grave, and they said yes. And they told us how to find it. That's his stone standing up, and there was all this stuff around it. Here, John Decker, Revolutionary War soldier. Okay, so anyway, here's an exciting thing. Very few of the graves are still there. Look, you can read this. And he married into the Rich family, and the Rich family is a very prominent family of rural Kenton County. Dr. Rich just died, a very famous Kenton County man. So anyway, um, we, we should have a ceremony here. The, the reason I've been hesitant to do it because it's over a hill on this farm. And they also have this brick house on the farm. And the gentleman that owns it thinks that they were one of, this was the first brick made in Kenton County. And they had a cowman they made this house out of their own brick. So anyway, this is a very interesting uh, grave. And this lady has documented, he has a DAR number and DAR information. The lady that documented it has since passed away. And this is why I'm so trying to get myself to do all this is because the people are passing on that have any knowledge of what take, took place in rural Kenton County. I'm from Independence and I love writing about these people, especially the Revolutionary War people. And before I forget, I have to tell you a story about the Stevens Metcalf. Doctor, uh, the Metcalf family came up from rural Kentucky and finally they settled in Grant County. Then Dr. Metcalf, my guy, came up from Grand County to go to medical school, and he settled in Independence. He, was, he owned a lot of land. He owned a big house in Independence, and he married a Stevens. So that was a, my two connection. Yeah, turn it off. The National Historic Registrar, and the mayor lives there. So when we had this big ceremony yeah, I it off. at the courthouse, we talked the mayor into coming and he was not really excited about it. And he said, well, if I, I'm pretty busy, I'll let you know. He came and he was the last person to leave. He couldn't believe the stories we're telling about rural Kenton County and especially this, these Revolutionary War people of independence. Okay, and on one road, the Marshalls, the Martyrs, the Lipscombs, all three, these Revolutionary War people settled uh, a lot of roads are named for them. So anyway, when I get this book together and I'm having help from 
Rhonda Warren and Kathy Dorsey. Uh, it'll be something to see. And what we hope to do is have a monument placed in the new courthouse, or the new office building with all their names on it. Because <clears throat> people never thought of this being filled with 60 some or more Revolutionary War people. So anyway, the Metcalfs came in with Simon Kenton, settled near um, down in Kentucky, and they kept moving up to Grant County. And then finally, my relative came to Independence. He was a county treasurer. He was a doctor. He has a, two homes in Independence. One is on the National Historic Register. And I have to tell you, the funny thing is I had never been in the home. And the mayor at Christmas has an open house. So Ken and I went out there and we took a, a biography of my Dr. Medcalf and his wife, Annabelle Stevens, and gave it to him as the first time we had ever been in the house. And I grew up out there. So now you see, uh, I didn't care to do this and now I'm obsessed with it, obsessed with it. So anyway, <clears throat> um, that's John Medcalf, father of the governor, the 10th governor. So anyway, first families through the Metcalf line. Anyway, the, here's us at uh, the airport. The SAR and DAR do a lot of events on our flight. Here's my husband. That's a naturalization ceremony in Louisville. We've been to the national headquarters in Louisville for many events. This guy's in charge of the, what do you call it, the honor guard for the, and the president of the SAR. And see, it seems strange because we haven't met for so many months with all of what's going on. It's kind of strange. This is Ken on the front row and behind him in the brown is Reverend Shelton who spent his life going from place to place in Kentucky for grave markings. I bet Ken and I have been to over 20 of them. They're the best things, so, so wonderful. <clears throat> we did one grave marking over at Spring Grove Cemetery, <clears throat> which was quite surprising. There was an individual out of Boston, Massachusetts that moved to Cincinnati, Ohio. He wound up dying in Cincinnati, but before he, he passed away, the uh, newspaper did a, an article with him. Uh, the newspaper article was from 1812. This gentleman wound up being one of the individuals that actually participated in the, uh, <laughs> the Boston Tea Party. Uh, it it kind of floored me to, to, to believe that an individual that actually had participated in, in the Tea Party uh, deal, he was, uh, I think, 12 or 13 years old when he, when he did this. He died and was buried in a, a cemetery, which is now where Washington uh, Park is located. They tore the cemetery out of Washington Park, which is right by Music Hall. And anybody that that would uh, pay for a relative, they'd move the, the body. Well, this individual had nobody left. So his remains were actually still uh, in the grounds there at, uh, at Washington Park. The only thing we put in the Spring Grove Cemetery was a memorial to, to him. So the you know, when you think about it, uh, they still find bones in the ground at Washington Park and so forth. Uh, it is uh, kind of remarkable that one of them actually participated in the in the Tea Party. Uh, one of the other things that I wanted to let you know, if you grow, go to the DAR website, uh, they have a, a search engine. So if you think you have a, a patriot, all you have to do is put the name in. And uh, if it will pop up for you, if they have the records, and it makes it quite easy to do the backward search. You know that your, your uh, individual is a patriot, 
all you have to do is fill in the, the, the back portion. And with the records that they have, anybody that's already supplied the information, you can then copy it off of theirs in, uh, as long as it's on your line. I want to talk about one more thing before we run out of time is pensions. Okay, they got, a, that was a thing to get them to serve that maybe when they got older, they would get a pension. And someone has gone in and typed up all these pensions. It's incredible what's out there. So anyway, this is what it will be in our book that we're making our booklet, uh, these pensions. And this is Robert Marshall's pension. You know where Marshall Road is out in rural Canton County. So anyway, you have to understand these people did not read and write. And they're going to this log cabin courthouse over in Campbell County. And they're trying to explain to them how they're ill, they've been wounded in battle, they're eight, 70, 60, 80, they're, they can't farm anymore, their wife isn't well, they have lost their papers, uh, someone has to testify that they're truthful. Um, it's just so interesting. And so the ones that got pensions, we know more about them because they had to tell their story, like what unit they were in, when what battles they were in, when they served. Uh, their family. Um, it's just so interesting. So anyway, um, I have one more project I'm going to tell you about. And then it goes back to first families. Okay, I was doing my son-in-law, his name is Derek Harper, and his mother Janice Harper was a Smith. So anyway, um, I, I I, was, I like to do genealogy for people and give it to them. So I was tracing her family back and John Smith married Elizabeth Tanner. You know, the Tanners, Tanner Station was the first uh, settlement in Boone County and nobody in first families is from Boone County. So anyway, uh, the Smith and the Tanner moved down to McLean County and all of these four generations are buried on the farm down there with graves that are marked. So anyway, I, I'm pretty sure I can prove this line to my son-in-law, Derek Harper. Then the Harpers moved up here. But the reason I think it's so exciting is that Boone County has no first family. And the, here's the Tanners who founded Boone County. So anyway, that's my next project. I've done the research. I just have to get on with it. So anyway, I'm writing, we're writing this booklet about the Revolutionary War people that settled in Canton County. We're working on um, this booklet on the Tanners, the Smith Tanner marriage and the first family of Boone County. Now I will tell you about one more thing then I'll probably let you go. Can we show this or not? Hold it up, I don't think you'll see it. Okay, I don't think you'll see this, but I'll tell you about it. We wrote a book, a booklet about the Clyer family and they all worked at Bavarian Brewery and they lived near there. The first Clyer came over in 1860 and he joined the Union Army, an all German army out of Cincinnati. Okay, our, his, my husband's family had never heard of this and we traced, uh, you should see this booklet we wrote about them. Okay, so anyway, we met the heir through Berenger Crawford of the Bavarian Brewery, and in his pictures, we could point out Clyers that worked at the brewery. So our next book is about the Deets, that's his grandmother's line, and there's 19 children by two wives, and I have all but two of them documented. So I'm, people say, what do you do? I don't have, I know, I'm always into this or doing something else. I love doing this. Uh, I love giving this as gifts. So anyway, we gave all of Ken's cousins this Clyer book, we had a Civil War a headstone put on his grave up in Highland, and we had this big ceremony with all the relatives. They loved it. So anyway, what I'm telling you, I'm not an expert. I'm just somebody who likes to do it. And I want you to say that I ex excited you to tell the story of your family to your relatives. And here's the way I look at this. I don't know how interested my daughter and her children are in this, but someday they'll have it. 
I'll have it all written out for him. I've even, we've, Kent and I've even written books about us from our birth to all the major activities in our life. And we've given it to them. So talk to your relatives, ask them questions. It's, this is the best gift you can give them is the history of their family. And thanks for taking time to talk to us and, or listen to us tonight. I hope you enjoy it. Yes. You might think it's hard to find someone mm. that's, uh, that's a patriot. I, I never looked into this and didn't do much with it. And my wife somehow talked me into trying to trace my lines. And I did find a patriot, document patriot. That's how I joined the SAR. But once you get into that and you start looking, I documented uh, another four patriots. So I've, I've, I've got five patriots that I've fully documented and have uh, on record with the SAR. Now, the strange thing, once you start looking and you start doing your research, I have another 13 individuals that I know were patriots, and I'm just missing uh, small bits of uh, documentation. You know, I've got the DNA information and everything else. So I know the lines are true, but it's uh, it just kind of uh, you know gets you overwhelmed when you when you think that well, I have no connections to the Revolutionary War, but I now know I have at least sixteen grandparents who actually participated. Great, great, <laughs> great, 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 and all that stuff. And along the way, you find you find different things. Uh, that uh, show up, you may have family lore that's been passed down. My grandmother and my aunt always told me that we were related to Pocahontas and I always laughed. Well, I finally found what they were talking about. And one of them, I think it was my fifth great grandfather actually married the granddaughter of Pocahontas. My, I have no blood relation to it because that was his second wife, and that's how that's how the uh, the story got passed on. So uh, I do have a, an uncle <laughs> that, that would be related, but okay. So we'll let you, we'll let you, if anybody has any questions, uh, can I like it if people call us, email us, and say, can you help us uh, find a revolution, our Revolutionary War patriot, or something about our family? That's what we like to do. Hey Pam and Kent, I have a question, uh, just a follow up from your from your comment that you just made. You were talking about um, all that you can find, and I know uh, Shane and I we've been using Ancestry.com and trying to learn more about our family uh, history. What what resources would you say you use the most, or what would you recommend for somebody who's just getting started? I'll tell you, one of the, the best things that I think you can do, and you might be afraid of, you know, stuff getting out, but have your DNA test run. Mm -hmm. There is so, there's so much information using Ancestry that you will not believe how many people you are related to. Uh, I've got thousands and thousands of people that trace through the, mm -hmm. the DNA portion. All you do is, is, uh, do a, a, a cheap DNA test with Ancestry and then put your family tree onto Ancestry. You, you don't have to, they'll let you put it on for free and then you can do the tracking. Uh, obviously what they want you to do is join uh, Ancestry and pay a, a yearly dues. But all of those records on Ancestry are available to you at the library and that's all free. But uh, once you get once you get that you you get your DNA matches they, they they provide them to you and then you see how the links start joining in it doesn't take long but it's it's really neat and as far as uh, if you're just tracing for the Patriots uh, that you're you're looking for the DAR website is one of if not it, it, the best just to give you the connections. Because if you find a Patriot on there, there will be a, a, a record which shows the lineage on the connection. And you can see how far back it brings it to you. And if, uh, if it's something that you're interested in actually documenting, 
you then get an official record with the rest. You have to pay a purchase price, but you get the official record and you get the documentation that went along to prove it. That is so cool. Plus, Reef Koizenbaum is a genius at doing this, isn't she? You're very good. Um, I have a couple of questions that have come through on the chat and a number of um, really interesting comments. So if you have a chance to read the comments, um, I would recommend it uh, to Pam and Ken. I know you have been busy making your presentation, but a lot of a lot of interesting comments. Um, the question, somebody had a follow up to the story about the man that came and who who had been in the Boston tea party when he was um, a young man. And they are wondering, do you happen to recall his name? Uh, unfortunately, I, I don't. I, I don't know. I, I probably can, can find it because it's, like I say, the, uh, the newspaper article is still in the archives for the, uh, the Cincinnati newspaper. And in the, in the, uh, it was written in 1812. Uh, there's it, probably, a, you can find his name also. Uh, because it's a memorial marker that's placed in Spring Grove. So Spring Grove will have, oh, yeah. just to, uh, 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 you know, come up with a name because they know why the, the marker was put in. That's, that is super helpful and such a beautiful place too, to, to oh, go to. Um, another question uh, that just came in, uh, Michelle Kelly was wondering, she says George Mason of Gunston Hall in Virginia was one of her ancestors. Do you think that would qualify her for DAR? Um, I can check it out. Um, I would love for her to contact me. I don't mind checking it out. Okay. That's what we like to do. That's our hobby. <clears throat> would you, Pam and Kent, would you all mind if, if you don't, if you don't mind, there's about 58 people on here, but um, if you don't care, you could put your, the best way to contact you just in the chat. And then if anyone wanted to reach out, then they could, if you wanted to do say an email address. That's for what we're doing. Okay. If you want to add that in the chat before we're finished here, and then um, that way people won't be able to contact you in advance. Um, tell you two quick stories. Mm -hmm. um, we did the DNA and I got the, Ken got this thing from this girl in New Jersey saying she was his cousin. And Ken said, no, I think you're my wife's cousin. She said her dad was from Independence, Kentucky. I had never met her. My uncle was divorced. Okay, so we got to meet her when we were going to a conference up in New England. Okay, so people say, did she look like you? She was almost six feet tall and she had red hair. You know, <laughs> okay, but she was hugging me and we were crying. It was one of the most exciting days of my life. Okay, that's the beauty of ancestry. Now, last month, my husband helped a, a friend, his best, one of his best friends who was an orphan find his family. Oh my gosh. He got to meet his, the relatives that are still alive. He's 82 years, He's 82 years old. He's, he can't thank Ken enough. Mm. And he did not want to do this. He thought it was dumb. Ken talked him into taking the DNA test. And he went up in Ohio and met all of his relatives that are still alive. He said it was the best day of his life. So there's so many exciting things about ancestry and tracing your family. Absolutely, absolutely. So, wow, that just kind of brings tears to my eyes. I love that story. Um, I have a couple more questions. Um, the next one is, you talked about the first families of Kentucky and Maybe this is a silly question, but um, is there kind of a list? And so you're trying to sort of match your family history to that list, or is it possible yeah. that there might be people that haven't been found on that list yet that you could? Yeah, and they just have to have been in before statehood, your okay. family. Okay. So there's a booklet. I have a booklet of all the people that have been documented. And like I said, there's only three from Northern Kentucky. That's why I want to do the Tanner Smith family. Gotcha. And then I'm sure once you do that, then a lot more people would right. be able to document that they were, um, right. that they came from that family. That's, that's very interesting. Um, I love these comments from like Debbie Blake. She says Deborah Blake on here, but I know Miss Blake. So she says she was amazed when she did her genealogy that most 
very early Northern Kentucky people came up from the South and not down the Ohio River. And so she had to um, really rethink a lot of the things that she had thought when, when she learned about that. She's also a member of the Cincinnati chapter of DAR, oh, by the way, she said. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> and a good friend of my family. So thank you, Debbie, um, for joining us today. Yeah, she's she's <laughs> right, because uh, the, most of them came in through, uh, through Virginia and uh, across the mountains. And even Pam's relative uh, that came in with uh, Simon Kenton on the raft, they didn't make it any further than uh, Maysville. And uh, they all got off at Maysville and, uh, and then went, went down uh, to Blue Licks. To Blue Licks. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Deborah Gers says that she is also an RBB DAR member, and she would like to know more about First Families of Kentucky. Many of her families either explored or came to Kentucky with Daniel Boone, and she's also related to both the Boone and the Bryan families. So I would just say, Kent, uh, if you don't mind typing in the um, chat your email address, because we're going to finish up here in just a couple of minutes, and that way people can write that down. If you don't, if you don't mind, um, I can figure out how to do it. <laughs> So you go to the bottom of the screen next to where you shared your screen and then you see there's the word chat and you just click on that and um, it opens up. Before we go though, we need to find out who won who answered our quiz. So can you tell us, we didn't have a lot of entries tonight, but that's okay. What, uh, what was the year that Kenton County became a county? 1840. All right, so Megan Ireland, you are the winner of our quiz question, um, quiz number one. And I don't think anybody got the right answer for the land that the courthouse was from. That's too high. McClellan is the street in front of the courthouse or to the <laughs> side of it. He's the one that gave the land. But that would be hard to come up with. Well, okay, this is the cemetery in Williamstown, the DAR and SAR put these wreaths out for Christmas, wreaths across America, the DAR and the SAR into many activities, many. That the Boy Scouts also help. That, mm -hmm. is, that is beautiful. Um, well, we are just about out of time. So if anyone um, wants more information about Northern Kentucky History Hour or Berenger Crawford Museum, we again encourage you to go to our Facebook page, to um, our website. Uh, the website is bcmuseum.org. Uh, you can tune in for free to our concert tomorrow night. And definitely don't forget to go to the website to find out more about the art relief auction uh, where Behringer Crawford will be involved in auctioning off a behind the scenes tour as well as an archeological dig. So we are so happy to have all of you this evening. Pam and Kent, thank you again. This is so inspiring. It makes me want to uh, stop what I'm doing and, and get back on Ancestry and find out more about uh, my family's heritage. We look forward to um, future Northern Kentucky History Hours with all of you. We have a lot of interesting things planned. Uh, we've got something about Orns v. Mitchell coming up. Uh, he's a fascinating guy, as well as some of our uh, very interesting historic preservation experts locally are going to be talking about some of our historic architecture. So uh, keep in touch via the Facebook page and the website, and we will see you soon. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>